Hello everybody, welcome back to the James Lawrence Allcott channel. It is half time in the Belgium versus England game. How am I feeling right now? I'm frustrated. Really, really frustrated. And I'm trying to keep calm. And I'm trying to give you some analysis. But it's going to be difficult. But I'm going to give it a go. Uh, that's what I do with these reactions. Half time and full time. So you get my feelings at both moments. Just so we can understand the kind of bias of both. Um, often driven by... The, the, the score line and listening to Jamie Carragher throughout that half. I was kind of feeling that myself. Um, let's get into the lineups first of all. Let's get straight into it. And by the way, if you enjoy this video, please do me a favor. Watch it the whole way to the end. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel and all those good bits and pieces. It really, really helps me out. So let's look at the lineups first and foremost. A lot of changes for, uh, sort of forced by Gareth Southgate um, in terms of the injuries to Sterling. Rashford, it meant that we played the 3-4-3 that Southgate really, really wants to play. Um, and then as time went on, we've sort of realised that Rashford's not going to be there, Sterling's not going to be up to it. And so the front three was not what I expected once you've got what's left over. Grealish has been desperate to get into the team, right? <laughs> and he's finally got him into the team. Has his hand been forced a little bit? Or was he going to do it anyway? I don't know, but that's not important. The important thing is Grealish is playing and starting, and I think already that's the first thing that I, if I'm looking at positives, and there are positives, guys. There are positives. It's so easy to go, well, we're 2-0 down, so we're crap. It's not the case for me. I actually think there's a lot of positives from that first half. I also think maybe a couple of changes need to be made. But we went with the front three of Jack Grealish, Mason Mount and Harry Kane. Uh, then a midfield four, Chilwell. Obviously, you've got your fullbacks bombing on. And then Tyra Mings, Dyer, and, and Walker. Let's get to the goals quickly because both goals, really, if you actually look at the stats of it, we've not been that bad. We've really not been that bad. And if you take away those two goals, and I know you're going mad in the comments, feel free. <laughs> But if you take away those two goals, one which is a, a pot shot from the edge of the box, which gets deflected and goes in, and the other one's a, a belter of a free kick from something that wasn't a foul, Declan Rice has won the ball there. If you take that away and look at the rest of it, actually, England have been pretty good in this half. We've had, look, seven shots to three. I feel like the way that we're playing is not what we're used to when it comes to England because, as Carragher said time and time again, there isn't that pace to just go for it. But I actually think we've been quite cute in how we've been trying to kind of move our way up the pitch, move our way round the side of the, the Belgian midfield, and then go, almost go out to then play into the likes of Jack Grealish and Mason Mount. Jack Grealish and Harry Kane, already, you can see they like playing with each other. And there's certain things that you kind of watch and you go, oh, you're just closing down space. But with the way that the Belgians started, they played with a really high line with the back three that they've got, Vertonghen, Denea and Toby Alderweireld, and, and looked to press out because they knew that you weren't going to get those big runs in behind. But those big runs in behind are actually coming at a slower pace, but from the, the two fullbacks. Chilwell's had to come off, which again is a bit of a killer for us, but we'll see what Saka can do as a, as a good deputy as a fullback. We'd love to have Chilwell there. Trippier, there's, there's, what we can see from this half as well is that goals come from different uh, methods and having someone like Trippier on the pitch to take some of those set pieces has been really good for England in the past. And so he's he never lets you down. Yes, we'd like to have Rhys James on the pitch instead of him. And I think he would be if that was the case, but he's not available. So we've got to get on with it. And Trippier doesn't let you down. And he's created a few things and he's trying to make those deep runs. But we've not got the goal. But that said, look at those stats again. Grealish has a chance straight after the goal. We have a header from Kane that gets knocked off the line, line straight after by uh, Lukaku. Um, there's some real positives there. There really is. I actually really like the way that Henderson's playing. I think Henderson's actually been very intelligent in terms of the way that he's moving about. Um, he's picking up the ball in, in all different areas of the pitch to kind of create that sort of almost like an overload around the side to allow you to get up the pitch to again play the ball into those half spaces to give Grealish the ball and to give Mount the ball. I think Grealish has been brilliant. He's been excellent so far. And again, if you look at the passage of play and take away a shot from the edge of the box and and a free kick, we've been the better team. We've actually been the better team. The problem now is that you've got to go for it. And I want I want Southgate to go for it. I want him to show some amb ambition. But actually this more kind of, it's almost like a, an Italian sort of way of playing, this kind of slow, slower build-up, patient build-up. It has been creating little pockets and little moments where 
Kane and Grealish, the amount of times they pass the ball to each other and then they look to slip each other in. Kane as well put a cross in and Grealish nearly got a second one. Uh, but, you know, he's not that... He's almost playing as a bit of a sort of shadow striker on that left side um, instead of, you know, an out-and-out -out winger. Because, again, Kane normally would be... It would be the other way around for Tottenham. He would be the guy dropping in and then he's got those two guys going beyond. But this way, it's actually got to be a bit more like an arrow. For me, though, Mason Mount doesn't... He doesn't fit this game. I like him as a player, but it's not working for me. We've got to be more... We do need that option going beyond. And we're 2-0 down, so we need to have a go at them. And I, I don't think there's any harm in doing that. So who do you take off to do that? For me... I would like to see Sancho come on. The reason I want Sancho to come on is because I think Kane can still be that sort of hold-up man on that uh, on the, the right-hand side as you're shooting at the goal, where Mount has been. He can be the guy who picks up the ball. And then on the left-hand side, Grealish can do that role. But then Sancho can be the guy that can stay out wide or get beyond a little bit more. I think as time goes on, it'd be really interesting to see if we could play four at the back as well. Eric Dyer, I think it's, he makes me nervous. You've got to be able to punch the ball or be patient at the right times. And sometimes it does feel a little bit slow and languid. Maybe that's just his style. But there's been a couple of times where we've been caught out of possession. And that's and, and that's going to lead to goals as time goes on. And we, we have to be both patient. But in terms of probing, we've got to be positive in how we do it. And Eric Dyer, for me, sometimes I don't get that from him. I don't get that from him. The midfield two, Declan Rice is the guy sitting there. Jordan Henderson, as I said, has, has actually kind of he's popped up on the left-hand side, almost like being as a left-back, just to help the ball move up the pitch so that you can get those two uh, of the four, Saka or Chilwell and Trippier, further up the pitch. So Henderson, I think, has done nothing wrong, but he might be another one that has to make way if you look to play two in midfield and play Mount and uh, Rice. But I would actually, I'd take Mount off, I'd put Sancho on, and I'd leave it at that for now. Because if we can get the next goal then we've got a chance in this game. And it's a shame. I think it's a real shame. I think we've actually been all right this half. But I might not say at the end, but that's how I feel right now. Let's find out how I feel at the end. <laughs> Full time, 2-0 to Belgium, obviously. Uh, how do I feel? I feel concerned, very concerned. I have backed Southgate because of he he's deserved the right to fail and he still deserves the right to fail and there were positives in that first half but that second half gives me massive concerns about how we can go and win a game how we can go and come back from being 2-0 down in a game against a team that will let you dominate the game and how he's going to react to that it was stubborn. He was really stubborn today. And you lot know, I want to back Southgate and I will continue to back Southgate because it's it's absolutely pointless not to. We've got a really good squad. We had some players missing in this game. That said, there are some problems in his decisions today that make me concerned, as I just said. There are positives. We'll get into that. But let's get, the, the big question is, is for Southgate, is people don't back him as a manager. They don't think he's got the the sort of, what's the word, the, the guile, the kind of thinking on your th feet uh, ability in those big games. And to be honest, he hasn't been overly tested enough. You know, the, the squad has been evolving as time goes on. And because of that, there are still question marks. And if you want to be really negative on him, then you can go that way. If you want to be really positive on him, you can go, you can be, you know, give him, give him an out. Today, credit where... Um, Criticism where it's due. That was poor from Southgate. He was really stubborn when it comes to that 3-4-3. Three, three. And for a team to to do well in international football or any football now, you need to be able to beat teams. And we're seeing it in the Premier League constantly. There are teams that are great on the counter-attack, but they can't break down teams. And, and this was an example of us not being able to break down teams and us being so stuck with the 3-4-3 three, or it's either stuck or stubborn that he didn't change it. Like the whole game, he didn't change it. He didn't move from that 3-4-3 uh, three, three against the team that every time I saw the ball go up to Lukaku, he had no one around him. So they'd made their decision. We're going to defend deep, not let any space in behind you, keep Grealish in front of us, and hopefully we'll be all right. 
and generally they were because again the kind of that that ability to be sort of uh, clinical for England wasn't there either really really disappointed that at half time I'm like be bold now Gareth come on have a little go at it and you could keep the 3-4-3 but have a little go at it when you're going to make your substitutions Harry Winks comes on now th- th- what's going through Southgate's head in this moment in time what's going through his head is that we played all right in that first half. We had seven shots to three at that moment in time. And at the end of the game, I'll show you now, 16 shots to eight, which looks positive. But Belgium let England have the ball in their own half for large parts of this game. And we weren't able to to, to break them down. And a big part of that was because we had too many... Pl- we won't be able to create the overloads that we wanted to because we had too many players back. We had three at the back the whole time. And I know you can say, look, they have one guy and then you have those two two centre-backs who can get involved. But really, we wanted to have two and then two players even higher up the pitch. It's too, it's too deep a starting point when you're chasing a game against a team that doesn't want to, to sort of play ball against you. And so to not bring on someone like Foden in a game like that when you've got the opportunity to or ultimately to bring on Harry Winks for Henderson when you're 2-0 down in what is essentially tournament football by this point of view but by this point sorry because they have to win the game so they need to get a goal quickly so they need to be bold and he's not been bold there and I'm annoyed at that because what's the worst that could happen you get beat by more so be it but I can live with that because I thought the 3-4-3 three, three is not a bad f- formation. And he's drilled it into that team. And we don't concede that many goals. But we're struggling to break teams down at this moment in time. If you look at that Ireland game as well, even in that Ireland setup, we got undone here by the fact that it was Belgium. In this game, you can look, Mount and Winks, having a real go at them with that kind of formation. Even something like that would have been something better than what we went for. It just, it was really, really sensible in a game that you needed to win. And that's really annoying. That's, I'm really annoyed at that. <sighs> Positives, it's got to be Grealish, hasn't it? I mean, the guy is world class. Like, it's official now, right? We all get that now. He is, this kid is world class. There's no doubt about that. He played in that game and ran it and created little things for for other people. Again, look, Belgium defended quite smartly, really. If you think how many... Look, Pickford didn't have to... Pickford didn't really have to make many saves. Maybe one right at the end when we're really kind of going for it. But Courtois didn't really make any saves either. But the front two of of Kane and uh, and Grealish, I thought, were brilliant. And when I was looking at the stats here, I think the things that... I do like about it is from an attacking point of view, I thought I thought Kane, we saw the old Kane there in terms of his getting on the ball, but not being able to play those passes because Belgium was so deep. So he had to dribble a lot more. And actually his dribbling was pretty successful. Eight dribbles, five uh, completed. Grealish, six and four. And I think actually maybe I need to refresh this because I think it was even higher than that by the end of it all. Um, but Grealish was just, he's just wonderful. And he is now in that team for me. Grealish has to start. Grealish and Kane look really great together. What they both don't have at this moment in time is that player who goes beyond. um, And hopefully they will get that. Henderson and Rice in a game that's nil-nil works against these big teams. I'm okay with it. As long as you're not chasing the game. As soon as you're chasing the game, Southgate needs to now go back to the drawing board and go, can we play 4-4-2 and be a bit braver? Can we play 4-4-2 and let Declan Rice sit there and drop back into that those centre-backs if we need to do that? We need to be more fluid as a team because we're, we have, we're getting to a point, we're close. I don't think we're there yet. We're not fully baked yet. We've got enough players to really have a go at these tournaments. But there's going to be stumbling blocks and there's going to be, there's going to be sort of stubborn teams that you come up against. And that's kind of what happened against Belgium today. Like, I think you've always got to try and scrape away the names. And the bottom line is we actually dominated the bulk of that game, but they let us and they felt comfortable generally. I mean, Mounier could have got sent off. I don't know how he stayed on the pitch. It was pretty crazy. Um, But really it was all in front of us. And again, that comes down to in in those changes that come at the end, you've got Sancho who comes on and you've got 
Cavaloon and comes on. Again, I'm, I'm cool with that because you could have Grealish as that guy drops in and gets on the ball and then let Kane and uh, Cavaloon push it on and then get some crosses in. But we don't put those crosses in because again, we're playing, we're playing too many people at the back. It was sensible, negative, stubborn, and I want Southgate to be much braver than that. So I'm annoyed. I'm a little bit annoyed. We need to be able to play in different ways with different formations. We need to be able to create and find different angles, and that needs to come through different formations. We are quite fluid in that 3-4-3. I will give them that. You see Walker bombing on at times. You see Mings getting involved in it at times, and that's great. That's brilliant. But teams that are going to sort of sit back like that, you don't need Winks and, and Rice in the team at the same time. It's just a little bit negative. And especially when you've got the likes of the players like, like Foden sitting there on the bench, when you need to ha have players who can pick up the ball in little pockets of space and turn quickly because they're surrounded and have that awareness. Winks doesn't have that awareness. It's not his fault, but he's not that kind of player. So to make that substitution winds me up. He got it really wrong. Really, really wrong this time. And like I said, I will criticise when it's due and I will try and give anyone a break when I can see the ideas around it. But this, for me, lent on the side of caution in a game where we were 2-0 down at half-time. And actually, they basically went like that. Come and have a go. Annoyed. Rat the Nations League. I'm not really bothered about that, to be honest. I think the depth of the squad is fantastic. Let's not get away from that. And Jack Grealish is just superb. Um, the amount of times he's got on the ball, the key passes that he made. Um, he's just, he's a joy to watch. And I'm excited to see how that front three, because we probably will want to come back to this. If you have a front three, it's got to be Grealish, it's got to be Kane, and then we've got to find out who that third player is. It's probably Raheem Sterling, but we've got lots of options. So that's the positive. We've got to remain positive because the Euros are coming around. But that's poor. Really, really annoyed at that. Uh, Southgate got it wrong. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. It really helps me out, as does hitting the like button. And I'll see you very soon.